Hey team, we're gonna learn how to add authentication to our Next.js app with Twitter and Next Off. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. If you're not already familiar, Next.js is an application framework where we're able to spin up a new React project pretty easily with a ton of awesome features. While it does come with a lot of awesome features, one thing it doesn't come with out of the box is authentication. But lucky for us, we have nextauth.js, which is going to provide an easy way for us to provide authentication for our Next.js app, including both client-side requests and API requests. As we can see in this list, it comes with a lot of providers for authentication out of the box, like Apple or Google, which is a pretty popular one. But for our use case, we're going to use Twitter, which is going to allow us to sign in with our Twitter account right into our Next.js application. While we're not actually going to have to interface with the Twitter API directly, it's going to give us the ability to use the Twitter API through Next Auth, which allows us to sign in with our account. But through this tutorial, we'll actually have to enter the developer portal where you might need to actually go through a review process in order to sign up for an account, but we're going to be able to create an application where we'll get some API keys that will allow Next Auth to actually interface with the Twitter API on our behalf so that we can log in with Twitter for our app. But to get started, we're going to use Create Next App, which is going to allow us to easily bootstrap a new Next.js application. So inside my terminal, I'm going to run yarn create next app, and I'm going to call this my auth app. And it's going to go and actually fetch all of our dependencies. It's going to install them. And it's also going to bootstrap our project with an existing template that's managed by Next.js. But once it's done, we can CD into that new directory. We can start up our development server with yarn dev. And we can see that it's already started to load up our project where it'll take a second the first time that it actually loads, but it's compiling our application where it's going to be available for us inside of the browser. And we can see here that we have our new Next.js app. So next we wanna actually add our authentication service. So we're going to install Next Auth where we can see here that we can install it as a dependency running next hyphen auth. So I'm gonna go back to my terminal, I'm gonna cancel out of the development server and I'm gonna run yarn add next auth. Just like before, it's going to add that dependency where we're going to be able to use it inside of our project. So now if we open up our application inside of our text editor, particularly I'm using VS Code, we can see that we have our index file, which is going to be our homepage. We also have our app, which is going to wrap our application. And we also have a sample API endpoint, which we're really only gonna use the index file inside of here. But NextAuth actually relies on a serverless function in order to provide the authentication information inside of our application. Particularly under the API folder, we're gonna create a new directory called auth. And inside of that directory, we're going to create a new file where we're gonna press bracket dot 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 next auth with all lowercase letter letters, closing bracket, and then .js. So if you're not familiar with the syntax inside of Next.js, what this is doing is creating a catch all route where the brackets first define that this area is going to be a parameter that gets passed into the compilation process, but also the three dots, the ellipsis, is going to say that we want to be able to capture multiple parameters. But now that we have our API route set up, we're going to pretty much add what you see here, but we're gonna add it a little bit simpler. So let's go back over to our file. I'm gonna first import in that dependency of next off, and then I'm gonna export default, and then I'm gonna call that next off function. What this is doing is it's actually accessing the next off API, the default functionality, where it's going to create our API endpoint completely for us. But we also need to add our configuration. So we're gonna pass in an object, where particularly we're going to pass in a provider's key, where we're gonna set up a new array, where we're gonna provide our Twitter provider. So in order to set up our providers, we're first going to import this providers dependency from next off providers, where we're gonna take this providers, we're gonna pass it into our array, and we're gonna access Twitter on side of that, and we're gonna call that function. Now inside of that, we're gonna pass in a new configuration object where we're gonna pass in two things, a client ID and a client secret. And this is what's gonna come from Twitter when we actually access the developer portal. But once we have those keys, we're gonna save them as environment variables. So we're gonna be able to access these values through the process. So we're gonna specify them as process.env.twitter consumer key. And we're gonna access the secret as process.env.twitter consumer secret. So if you're not familiar with the process of using environment variables, what this is going to allow us to do is store sensitive data 
in particularly our key and our secret, which we don't want the public to be able to access, where we're going to be able to inject those values at runtime so that we can still use the API authentication for Twitter, but we can't actually expose that information to the people who are using our application. But in order to define those variables, we're going to create a new file in the root of the project called .env.local, which if it's not already there, we can see that we want to add that inside of our git ignore because we don't want to commit that to git, but Next.js automatically adds that because that's a predefined pattern. But inside of our .env.local, we want to see that we're going to define these two variables and we're going to set those to our keys, which we're going to grab in a second here. But before we do that, we need to define one more variable and that's next off underscore URL, where that's gonna be the authentication service URL. And in particular, since we're developing locally right now, that's gonna be HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000. Or if you're using a different port, you might wanna change that port. But when we actually deploy this to production, you would use whatever that production URL is for your authentication service. So now that we have our environment variables set up and ready to go, let's actually go grab them from the Twitter developer portal. So back on developer.twitter.com, we can head over to our developer portal where because I'm logging into my existing Twitter account at Colby Fayok, I already actually have some applications set up that I'm using for my own work. But we, what we can do is over in the overview tab of our projects and applications, we're gonna see that we're gonna be able to create a new app. Now, before we actually go through this, I just want to add a reminder that you might not have access to the developer portal immediately, but what you'll want to do is if you don't, you want to sign in with your Twitter account and you want to submit an application in order to get that developer account, which you just have to fill out a few basic form inputs, but allowing them to make sure that you're not going to spam or do anything nefarious with the Twitter API. But once we're ready, we can click create app and we can see that we need to give it an app name where this needs to be a unique value across everything. So I'm gonna call it my space jelly app since I doubt anybody has that right now. I'm gonna click next and we can see that I'm already given some keys. Where here we have our API key, which also can be called the consumer key. And we also have our API secret key, which can be called the consumer secret. So we're gonna first, before we do anything else, we're gonna copy these values over into our application and I'm going to paste it into my environment variables. And we don't need this bearer token for now for our purposes, but it might be worth saving all these values somewhere safe to make sure that you always have access to them later. If you lose them though, you can always regenerate them inside of your application. But now if we click app settings, we can actually go to our page where you can fill out some things like the description and you can even add an app icon if you'd like. But what we really need to do for our purposes is first inside of app permissions, we're gonna click edit. We wanna select read and write and hit save. And what we also wanna do is go to authentication settings where we're gonna hit edit. We wanna enable this three legged OAuth. We also wanna enable a request email address from users. And then we're gonna also define a couple URLs here where for my purposes, I'm just gonna, for my website URL, as well as my terms of service and privacy policy, I'm just gonna paste in spacejelly.dev. This should really be whatever your application website URL is when it's going to production, as well as the terms of service and the privacy policy, as you wanna make sure that you're giving your users when they're actually logging into their account with your application, an idea of what they should expect. But inside of the callback URL, since we're developing locally right now, we're gonna define this as an API endpoint. Now, just to break this down quickly, since this is one of the more important things of setting up our application to work locally, first, we're gonna define our callback URL as our localhost 3000, where again, because we're developing locally, we're gonna use that value. Now, if we were on production, we would substitute that with whatever our production URL is. But next, we can see that we're first calling the API route, which is going to be that Next.js auth authentication route that we created, where it's inside of that auth folder. And as we mentioned before, with our catch all route, we can see that we have two parameters that we're passing in. So inside of that next auth route, it's going to understand that we're first going to define a callback and it's specifically going to be a Twitter callback, and it's going to be able to use those parameters as ways to actually navigate and figure out how to take that information inside of our app. But once we have those set, as well as everything else, we can click save, and we should pretty much be ready to go. 
Now, as I mentioned before, if you happen to lose those API keys and that secret that you generated before, you can always come to the keys and tokens tab where you can regenerate that API key and secret, where we can see that it's also called our consumer keys, where it's going to be able to provide those values for us. But just keep in mind, if you regenerate them, it's going to invalidate the old API key and secret. So now that we have our environment variables in here, you wanna make sure that you restart your development server as Next.js isn't going to actually pick up those environment variables by default and reload. We need to make sure we restart so that it picks it up. But now we can actually integrate the Next Auth client API so that we can manage and allow somebody to log in to our sessions using Twitter as an authentication. So to start our integration with the Next Auth client API, the first thing we wanna do is integrate the provider where in this instance, the provider is a little bit different of a concept, where with Twitter, the Twitter was the authentication provider, where with this client, this provider is essentially going to be the method that wraps our React application, which allows us to provide global state, in particular using the React context API to access that session information throughout the entire application. So I'm gonna take this provider and I'm going to actually wrap my component with it where we can see that it's going to nest that component right inside. We're gonna close that up. So we have our component being returned. Additionally, we wanna pass in a prop of session into our provider where we're going to take our page props, which is an argument inside of the my app function. And we're gonna pass that in as page props.session. Again, the app.js file is going to wrap our entire application. So that's why this provider is really able to provide that global session information for us so that we can use it anywhere. But now we can open up our index.js file and I'm gonna import the sign in, sign out, and use session functions from our next auth client, where we're going to be able to use this to kind of like it says, sign in and sign out, but as well as grab the session information so that we can use it inside of our application. So first I'm gonna define at the top an array where we're going to grab the first available data and we're gonna pass in the use session as our hook where this session is going to populate with our session data. Now I'm also going to scroll down and inside of this paragraph tag for our description, I'm going to replace it with a little bit of a snippet that I got from the GitHub of Next Off, where all this is doing is it's saying if we don't have a session, we're gonna say that the person is not signed in and we're also going to provide a sign in button that allows them to trigger that sign in function. If that person is signed in, we're gonna say that they are signed in as that user email. And then we're gonna also include a button that has an on click where it's going to allow that person to sign out. So we have both our signed in method and our signed out method when dealing with our session. But now if we open back our application, we can see that we have that not signed in value here, where let's click that sign in button. We see that we get the sign in with Twitter button, where if we were configuring a different provider, we would have a stack of different buttons for every authentication provider that we provided. But here we're working with Twitter. So let's click that sign in with Twitter, where it's going to actually take us over to our Twitter application where we can log in. I changed accounts because I don't want you to see my personal email, but we can see here that it's the MySpace Jelly application that we just registered inside of the developer portal, but I'm going to be able to authorize this on my account where it's going to redirect you back to our application. And we can see that it now says signed in as Cosmo at spacejelly.dev. If I want, I can even sign out where it's going to bring me back to an unauthenticated status and I can sign right back in to make sure that my account is nice and authenticated. The cool thing is we can even see how this authentication is working in practice by opening up our developer tools where we, if we navigate over to the network tab and we hit refresh so we can grab this session information, we can see that first we get our headers and our request where we're making this request to API slash auth slash session. And it's going to respond with this data where we can see our email here our image, which if we actually look at that image, image is going to be our Twitter avatar, but we also get our name. So that means we're getting all this information as our session data right inside of our application. And we're getting that all pretty much out of the box with, with next off. To see exactly how that works, we can see that if we now console log out our session from this use session hook, and we go back to our browser and open up our dev tools again, we can see this object has the exact same data that we just saw inside of the network tab. 
So that means if I wanted to welcome the user, if we already have somebody logged in, I might want to change this to welcome session. We'll add a ternary statement where if we have a session, we'll say session.user.name. Otherwise, we'll say to next.js. And once the page reloads, we can see that it now says welcome Cosmo the Space Jellyfish. And now if we sign out, we can see that it blows away that session information. It now says next welcome to next.js. Now, as we saw before, when we load this page, it's grabbing this information client side, meaning it's making a request out to our serverless function and grabbing it directly from our API. But what if we wanted that to come right out of the box, where because it's doing it client side, we can see that there's a quick filter there, where because we're doing it client side, we can see that there's a quick filter where we get an unauthenticated state first. The cool thing about Next.js is it also provides server-side rendering capabilities. And if that's something that you'd like to opt into, we can take advantage to the get server-side props capabilities right inside of our project. Now, just as a caveat, I personally like to go static first with my information. That's why I think the client-side requests are a good option. But if you're using the get server-side props, that means that your site isn't going to be able to be statically compiled out of the box. It's going to now be server-side rendered. But at the bottom of our index.js file, we're going to export a new async function called get server side props, where we're going to also configure an argument of context, which is going to come from our project. But we're going to finally return a new object, but that object is going to include a property of props, which we're going to pass in our session. To get our session information, we can't actually use the use session hook as we can only use that inside of React components. So instead, we're going to import the get session function, where if we go back down to the bottom of the page, we're going to say oh, our session is equal to await get session, where we're going to also pass in this context to this function so that those two are able to coordinate each other with the information from the context of the application. But then we can take this session variable and we can pass it right into our props. But back at the top of the page, we can now define that session as a prop inside of our home component. And we can even comment out this use session hook, which we have to because we already have session defined. But let's see what happens when we now reload the page. If we go back to our page, we can see that if we reload, we're no longer getting that flicker. Every time we reload, we can see that I'm reloading because of that reloading inside the developer tools, but it's now coming directly from the server with our information where it's saying it's signed in as Cosmo as well as Cosmo the Space Jellyfish. The great thing is whether we want a server side render or if we want to do it all statically with client side authentication, we have all the options available to us using the next authentication API endpoint as well as all the client side API options that they provide us right out of the box. The great thing about adding authentication to the application is you can verify the identity of the person actually accessing that. So if you want to create some kind of account system where you can add databases directly to your application to store account data, or if you want to just track who's actually logging in and having access to the information you're providing, it's a great way, an easy way with Next.js with Next Auth.js to provide that capability. Authentication is an important way to be able to verify the identity of the people actually visiting your app, but it's often super challenging to be able to figure out, but luckily we have nextauth.js to be able to provide that out of the box for Next.js applications. What's your favorite or most creative use case of authentication for applications? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.